challenging time like this one where we are faced with uh, not having um, medicine that could cure immediately that one or vaccine and so on and so forth. But anxiety and other aspects will not win the coronavirus. The coronavirus will be win by the fact that we mobilize a scientific team, we mobilize our support, our financial, technical means, but at the same time, having at each individual level the required behavior to prevent the disease and if it happens uh, forbidden to make sure that we have the required behavior that will stop the virus from spreading. I just want to assure you that your leadership at country level and at global level, all the head of agencies here and globally, we are all taking the required measures because your safety and your security are topmost priority for all of us. We do have some meetings that have uh, set up measures that you need to observe. We are doing it in close partnership with the government because as you know, security of UN staff and dependents starts and is first and foremost uh, with our uh, first and foremost with the host government. We are also very uh, pleased to say that the government has a clear contingency plan. Uh, and uh, we'll do whatever it takes to support the successful implementation of the contingency plan. The UN also is finalizing its contingency plan. And in all your single agencies, you do have business continuity plans that will help us stay safe, secure, but at the same time, keep on delivering for the people in Rwanda, leaving no one behind. So this town hall is your time to discuss, to raise your concern, to raise your anxiety, to provide solution and suggestion for that together we can strengthen this team approach and teamwork to overcome this coronavirus. I do have hope, I strongly believe that together, both locally and globally, we'll manage as mankind has always done to overcome this uh, coronavirus and go back to normal business and normal work. Some measures have been taken uh, in your business continuity plan as well as for the government, including leaving, uh, working remotely, including taking required measures that I'm sure our COVID-19 Dr. Mwinga will come to. So I just wanna say that uh, I'll give the floor to Mwinga to give us a brief overview on what's going on both globally and locally. What are the measures that we are taking to keep you safe and secure and deliver? What are the things that you must know about this coronavirus one before anything happens? And what are the preventive measures as well as the other measures that we need to take? I have shared with you a link, which is a powerful resources for all what you need to know, it is an important link that gives you answers to a variety of questions that you might have. Of course, as a collective leadership, we'll continue to provide you update on the measures, on the communique from the government, and the communique from the designated official and resident coordinator to keep you away and to keep you really updated, to keep you abreast of what's happening. I can assure you also that we'll use at utmost while almost always pre preserving the privacy of colleagues, we still will keep you abreast of everything. We'll be transparent, we'll say to you the truth, because even very difficult truth should be said if you are accountable leaders, if you are leaders to whom you can bestow your trust and you can bestow your way of leading us in this challenging time. We owe you all the required information, we owe you trust, we owe you transparency, and we owe you to give you the required 
information while at the same time, as I mentioned, preserving any privacy that is necessary. So this is my message to you. We have hope. We keep on doing whatever it will take with the host government and the international community and the UN at HQ and in various capital cities of our important organization so that you keep safe, secure, you, your family, your friends, so that we can really stay and deliver and make sure that we overcome this threat to humanity. Not only a medical threat, but also an economic and socioeconomic threat. I read yesterday that 421 million students are out of schools. Uh, we also have resources. Uh, as you can see, they also say that even the projected uh, growth of 2.9% globally might drop up to 1.4%. Exports are dropping. Uh, Wall Street and other aspects of uh, these financial markets are dropping. This could have a toll also in the way that UN would have access to resources to keep on implementing its business. But let's focus first of all, foremost, on the safety and security of your family and the staff. I wish you all the best and we are here to answer your question. But before that, let me hand it over to Dr. Mwinga to work us through this coronavirus and some important steps that staff might be aware of in order to behave properly so that we can stop this coronavirus and keep safe and secure. Thank you very much, colleagues. Good afternoon, colleagues, and uh, thank you to UN Resident Coordinator for the opportunity to be able to discuss the coronavirus uh, pandemic that is facing the globe. I'm sure most of us know that this disease outbreak occurred at the end of 2019 and took us into 2020. It started in one country, but now is all over the globe on every continent. As of uh, the 15th, globally, there were more than 153,517 cases that were confirmed to have been infected with this new virus called COVID-19. Unfortunately, there are also people who have succumbed to the virus and the number estimated at 5,735. The World Health Organization has indicated that the risk is very high globally and also regionally for the outbreak to affect any of us and all of us across the globe. So what are the measures that's uh, being expected to be done globally? Some of, the, some of the strategies that we have to look at critically in each of the countries, in each of the districts, provinces, communities, is that we have to stop transmission of the infection from one person to the other, whether within the household or within the community, or wherever they are, yes, people may get the infection, but one of the primary goals we want is to stop the spread from one person to the other. And in doing that, in the countries, we are working to ensure that there is early identification of a person who has the infection, and if the identification is done, the person is put away from where he has opportunity to infect others. So you are hearing terms of isolation, that a person is isolated. This is basically to put the person apart from others to reduce the chances of the person passing the infection to others. We also have to care for people who get infected very early. From the evidence which has been shown, majority of the people are going to have mild illness and may not require any hospitalization. Unfortunately, there's a small percentage that may need to have uh, hospital care, 
and an even much smaller percentage, about 3% who will need critical care to be in the hospital because of respiratory complications and others. Another important issue for us is to communicate the critical risks and also the events that are happening and also to counter misinformation that is happening uh, during this outbreak. Here in Rwanda, I think we are aware that the government has put in a lot of measures to prevent and prepare and be ready for coronavirus. Unfortunately, we have recorded the first case and subsequently there have been four additional cases. So we have now moved from being in the phase of preparedness and readiness to being in the phase of response where as much as possible, the country working with different partners is trying to contain the spread. Of, uh, so during this time, we know that staff will have different questions. They will have different concerns about what could happen. And this is one of the purposes of this uh, town hall. We have had different uh, discussions in the different agencies, and you've had opportunity to ask. This is another opportunity. We have the same two colleagues who've been to your different agencies, Dr. Elizabeth and uh, Dr. Alfred. And so when it comes to the questions and answers, you will be free to ask the questions in English, in French, and Kenya Rwanda. What would we like uh, staff to take home? As much as possible, we should all take personal measures. One of the most effective things is the hand washing, which here in Rwanda we were already doing when we had the threat of Ebola. So we continue as much as possible with the hygiene of frequent hand washing with water and soap for an appropriate duration. And I understand there's the hand wash challenge that even the head of state has asked people to participate in. If you do not have uh, the facilities with soap and water, please be able to use sanitizer. You've also seen measures of what to do if you're sneezing to cover, to cover with a tissue, which you immediately put in a closed bin, or to flex your elbow and use that as much as possible, avoid coughing and sneezing into people's faces. Avoid being around uh, people who are ill if you don't have to be and you're not part of the care of those people. Keep social distancing at least a meter away from individuals and we are encouraging that whether in the, uh, in the meetings or places where we are working to keep a distance of at least one meter between, our, between ourselves. And if we are ill, we are best advised to be careful of our interaction uh, with the outside. If we have symptoms that relate to fever, dry cough, sore throat, what, what do we do? And we think we have been in contact. At national level, we have been given a phone number 114 to be able to call immediately to get the assistance that we need. We also have our agency guidelines that we need to follow on who we need to inform should we be unwell or should we become an alert where we are being investigated for COVID-19. And I would encourage all staff that as much as possible, we try to call the numbers which are provided nationally and also the numbers which are provided by the United Nations in terms of the UN medical services and uh, or the focal points in our particular agencies. This will help facilitate that we are transported to facilities in a safe manner that does not uh, have bearing on spreading infection should we be infected. And if we test positive, what should we do? Again, we are following the national guidelines for care 
of people who have confirmed infection with COVID-19. Some may be cared for in a different manner. Some may be isolated in particular places where the government has identified and depending on the severity of the illness, they are different places where the people can be cared for. At the end of the day, I would like to join Forde in indicating that we remain calm, we remain vigilant, we put the measures that we need to have in place, we become supportive of each other, we refrain from uh, information which may be misleading or false, stick to the facts that are available. The facts are there on the Rwanda Biomedical Center website. There is also facts which are available on the World Health Organization website, and the United Nations have also got specific websites where we can get the information that we need. This virus is with us today, but it won't be with us forever. It can still be, it can still be uh, overcome, and it's all of us together that will work to overcome this outbreak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Mwinga. Uh, in the website, you already have uh, a chat that you can click on and put, we already have three here. We already have three person who have put forward questions. Uh, so you can type your question. In the meantime, I received from the ASIO one question which is, related to the activation of the BCP. The question is, uh, in case we need a signature of supervisor, senior management, how can we arrange while working remotely? Uh, or should we hold or work without a signature? The second is, working remotely means staying at your own duty station, Kigali or other cities in Rwanda, or are you one staff allowed to work wherever they want outside of Rwanda. If the UN staff already purchased a ticket, flight for leave, should I cancel the travel? Is there any possibility to start uh, border restriction isolation in Rwanda? So I think that this is, this are very important question, but for the business continuity plan, I think each agency has its own business continuity plan that gives you all the required measures to have the continuity of our business. For example, me, when I'm even without crisis, when I'm aware uh, Immaculate has an electronic signature. If I approve it by email, she just put the electronic signature and it is approved. Some agencies just have a code uh, on their uh, approval by email. There's a specific code that the head of agency will, will, will approve. I do think that uh, for that question, I would really refer that person to talk to, to, to talk to the head of agency that will explain their BCP. But yes, there are means to continue doing that with electronic version, approval in the system, approval by electronic signature given, approval by email using code. So that's uh, what I wanted to say. For the second one, which is, uh, your own duty station, when you are appointed uh, in your letter, the duty station is mentioned. It should be Kigali if it is the case, it could be Rubavu, it could be elsewhere. But the mechanism through which you are committing could be also something that you could discuss with your supervisor. But normally your contract do not mention Rwanda, it will mention your duty station. Why it is mentioning your duty station? Because even if you are traveling, uh, from Kigali to Rubavu, Rubavu is not your duty station, you'll be allowed to BSA. That's why they are not putting duty station Rwanda. You, the duty station is where you have your physical office and then the, the manager could also discuss if there are any other way of flexibility that is within the agency left, it's not the designated official. So for the, for the ticket, I, I think, uh, Rwanda already has taken some measures for all for the people coming from the uh, uh, countries with what we call community spread uh, coronavirus. I think that the Dr. 
Muinga could answer that. Uh, that is the countries in which measures have been taken either to, to quarantine or have self-monitor based on what would be your symptom upon arrival. But already many countries have restriction. Even the US, they have closed for a month's flights to Europe. Uh, and, and Morocco has uh, closed for the flight to uh, uh, France by boat and by any other means. Senegal, they have also closed for traveling by uh, sea to come to visit Senegal and so on and so on. So many countries are taken measures. So it would be good, there is a website that gives you all the list of countries with uh, you know, the uh, community spread coronavirus and what are the restrictions. I recommend you to go to the website on the UN personnel that always give you that elements as well as the RBC uh, website here in Rwanda that could provide you information regarding uh, your travel. I don't know if I can unmute head of agency who wanna jump in, but anyway, this is the answer. For the BCP, refer to your uh, agency, and for the travel, this is uh, the, the, the pieces of, these are the pieces of advice I wanna give, unless Dr. Mwinga can come also come. For grading of uh, countries that have reported coronavirus, they've been categorized in where there are imported cases, that is the cases which are there came from another country where coronavirus was circulating and they got the infection from there and so now you record that this country has one or two or four cases but they are imported into the country. But when the infection starts to spread from person to person within the country, then the country moves to where we say there is community transmission. And as uh, UNRC said, a number of countries are restricting entry of people coming from uh, countries where there is community transmission. Then there are countries who are indicating that if you arrive from a country that has community transmission, you will immediately be put in quarantine. Some of them, the quarantine is going to be uh, self-quarantine. For some, it will be in institutions. Over this weekend, a number of countries were also canceling visas and travel. Some are doing it for all foreigners. Some are doing it uh, for people coming from specific countries. The UNRC had also sent a communication in terms of UN missions from countries where there is a community transmission to avoid going to those countries and also to avoid people coming from those countries because they may not be able to do their work. They may end up for 14 days in another place instead of coming to do the mission. And this has happened in some of the countries. So for your leave travel, I would advise that you really see where you're going, what the prevailing uh, status of that country is, and the advisory that you will get from UNDSS may be helpful for you to decide whether to go to that particular destination or to wait till things have cooled down before traveling for that particular leave travel. Let me also add that uh, this is something that we discussed during the, the, the UN city. You can keep it. We discussed it. And uh, I think what we say that no one can prevent the staff from exercising, uh, you know, uh, entitlements to, to leave. But as you know, also, there are two things that is attached to that. One is the time to take the leave will be also at the discretion of the supervisor, because depending on the, the work to be done. The second is the information that Dr. Mwing has talked talk about. Uh, I think I know at least two staff who said that they don't want to face this issue of being quarantined, so they postponed their leave. But 
That one you can discuss also with your supervisor. The other one, which is a very difficult as well question that we receive, is a colleague saying that <clears throat> now that school are closed, uh, some parents are considering, you know, bringing their children into Rwanda. What would be the measures that the UN could do to support them? Because uh, some uh, children arriving are minor by definition, and uh, having them go through serious, uh, you know, quarantine uh, or being also um, in the measures that have been taken uh, locally uh, might be very stressful. So is there any support that you, support that you want can do in that matter? First and foremost, the guidelines for quarantine globally uh, made in such a way that you want to preserve dignity of people and not make people unnecessarily uncomfortable while trying to stop the spread of the disease. So for Rwanda, the guidelines are there on where people are going to, uh, are going to be held and how they are going to be transported. The UN working with the government can uh, liaise with the national authorities to see where the staff is, where the child is, and see if there is any further support that can be given as needed. They are usually contact numbers of people that you can contact while undergoing either isolation or quarantine. And in addition, in the UN contingency plan that uh, UNRC was talking about, we will also in, in, include uh, telephone numbers for when we have issues related to medical symptoms or where we have issues related to any other type of support. So on a case-by-case -case basis, as issues come up, we'll see how the UN can best assist staff and their households to be comfortable during the different processes that we have to abide by. However, we have to be clear that the UN does not have a separate process from the national process in terms of people being isolated and people being quarantined and where that actually happens. That is the host government that is guiding those decisions. I just want to add that if that uh, case happens, maybe it would be good to inform us so that we can see also what support can be done in that matter. So there is another one, oh, that's our medical, eh? I'm sorry. But, um, so is it worth to generalize the use uh, of masks? No, I'm sure you've seen a lot of guidance that people wearing masks indiscriminately uh, because they are scared of getting the virus is not a very useful use of the mask. However, it is advisable to be able to have some because should you develop symptoms, it would be best for you to use a mask so that you are the one who's not spreading the infection to other people. As you know, there is also a shortage of personal protective equipment globally, and the focus really should be as much as possible for things to be used by people who most need them, like health workers, people who are caring for confirmed cases, and also the cases themselves. Yeah. I think that for the mask as well, I think you have read that uh, and uh, yesterday the RBC uh, representative mentioned it in the TV show that uh, masks are meant for people who have the symptoms or the health workers who are in direct contact or people who might be in direct contact without them knowing, uh, like at the airport you have seen it or the medical doctors and others. I think it's, it's reply also to one question. But uh, the other one that uh, we are having is, has the government activated the national self-isolation? Why, what is the point for UN agency to do this alone? I think she's, he's talking about self-quarantine or isolation even. The, 
before I call Elizabeth to indicate that, uh, I, I, can I? Yeah, yes, of so course you can. There's a question on how long it takes for symptoms of the COVID-19 to appear, which is the period which we say from the time of infection, the incubation period. The range from different studies has been about two to 14 days with an average of about a week. And some studies are now showing as early as uh, five days for symptoms to appear. They will be outliers in averages where for some people it may have taken longer, but in general, most of the people who are uh, infected, it, they will show symptoms within 14 days. And that is why 14 days is being used as the period of time where people stay either in quarantine if they have no symptoms or in isolation if they are symptomatic. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, Elizabeth, I know we were together most of the time last week and the uh, situation has changed. And currently, I know maybe the question is coming with reference to the current situation where there are some of us who are contacts and uh, we have contacts at different levels. There are high risk contacts and there are some people maybe who are contacts but uh, low risk and there are different measures that are supposed to be taken. So there is self quarantine, self quarantine where that is for high risk uh, contacts, which, which usually happen uh, in that there could be quarantine in a facility for the very close contact, e.g. Uh, household members, and uh, there are those who will be on self-quarantine where maybe you didn't have that close personal contact with an individual, but you are still considered at risk, and that self-quarantine entails you being able to be, uh, it can be done maybe even in a house setup, but the person is not supposed to share items with other household members, and uh, they're supposed to be alone for a particular period, like within the 14 days, and they're supposed to be reporting, like taking temperature uh, for within that period of 14 days. In case somebody develops symptoms, then they're supposed to wear a mask and call the number that is, uh, that is given. There are guidelines on quarantine, on self-quarantine, on WHO website, and uh, also RBC, will be also having that uh, guidance, so you can also refer. But there are also those particular contacts who are just doing self-monitoring. You could not have been in close contact with the person, but maybe because as a, by virtue of sharing a building or an office, there, there is an element of risk, but because the risk is not as high, these people are supposed to self-monitor and report when symptoms uh, arise. So there's a difference between the self-monitoring and the self-quarantine. Self-quarantine, you are limiting the movement. You're not even supposed to be moving around. Yes. And the UN is not setting up a separate system. The UN is following the national guidance. And when we have any measures, we are doing it in collaboration with the national government. Yes. Okay. I think that... Uh, there is a document that is also very good on that, which is seeking care for coronavirus disease. And you need to know that, uh, as it was explained by the two experts in, 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 in medical issues, that isolation and quarantine are different. Isolation is for someone who is sick and focusing on preventing spread. Quarantine is for someone who is well, but has been exposed to the virus, and focusing on close monitoring to detect if they become infectious. As someone becomes infectious in the very early stage of symptoms starting, in many cases, the two are treated similarly. That's very, and then for the isolation, it was also very clear. Uh, restrict activities outside your home, except for getting medical care, do not go to work, school. We can share, that's something that already Dr. Minga has explained. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say. And uh, if you remain for the quarantine, if you remain symptom free for 14 days after your exposure, then you can resume normal activity. That's what is in the guidelines of uh, these uh, two measures. So uh, there is another one which is saying, um, 
why self -actual? so it was explained what is expected after two weeks we also explain so there is please let us know what the procedures for UN staff stuck abroad the country I'm currently ban all arrival to and departure from its territory so for for Rwanda uh, it's uh, it's very clear we have discussed it and we say that uh, it is uh, uh, the the security clearance will not be guaranteed uh, for a person coming from countries where we have community spread disease uh, that is what is going on so the way I would suggest is as we are in some countries working remotely it happened to one staff it was not related to COVID but he was in one duty station and he was uh, his life was threatened so we put him in another duty station and that person was working remotely from that other duty station so there are measures that need to be discussed if they are fit fit case maybe the two uh, designated officials will discuss but the issue is not the UN it's not me or the, these are measures taken by uh, sovereign governments if a sovereign government is saying uh, this uh, person could not enter or if it uh, that person enters will be quarantined I can't go you know against the measures I know that there is a very difficult situation that happened to Madagascar just this morning when people were boarding Madagascar did not issue a quarantine measure for people flying from France but by the time the plane landed they had the measures so they were given two options either to go back with the same plane to France or being self-quarantined in, in Madagascar. So some did take the one to go back, the others did not uh, do that. So that's what I can answer on that. Yes, there was this answer saying that, could you confirm that if I understood your point clearly, work from home is only allowed in the duty station, but we can discuss the detail with supervisors. That's what I told you. The issue is that every single agency has its own BCPs. And the BCP, Business Continuity Plan, explain exactly what they want, how they want to do it to work remotely. There are essential staff that could be called on duties. They know themselves. There are the other staff. The managers of the agency will let you know if you have clear, clear you know, ways of dealing with that. They can allow committing, but that one, it is up to the agency to look at the way that they will be doing without disrupting their way of working and without also being obliged to pay DSA. Because if you are in another uh, area which is not your duty station and you are allowed to work there, they might have also an impact on the uh, daily subsistence allowance. That's what I can say on, on that one. Is risk mitigation for spread within the UN family. For risk mitigation for spread, we have to look at it not just within the UN family, but within the country, within the household, within our, our districts. The messages are the same that we had indicated earlier, that one, we all need to be very self-conscious of our hygiene practices that we indicated. We also need to be very self-conscious of being very quick to identify illness with the specific symptoms of fever, cough, uh, sore throat that may indicate that we have the infection. And when we have the infection, we, call, we seek the appropriate medical advice. If we think that we have been in contact with someone who is infected, the government is doing very active contact tracing of anyone who is confirmed. The government will get a list of everyone who is considered a high risk and the person will be contacted and given the measures of what to do. And close contact we have indicated it's being in close proximity with a person. That's why we're asking social distancing a meter or two apart if you can be from other people. If we've been in an environment that requires to be 
cleaned specifically because of possible contamination that is also being put in place in collaboration with the Rwanda Biomedical Center. So the contamination of areas which may be potentially uh, having the virus, but most of the measures are what we need to do ourselves in our families. I think that there is also a question that if you get the virus and get proper medication care and get healed, if you get out, uh, to the, can you get out to the normal business, your usual business? Can you go back if you are treated and you are healed? Yes. Or are so, you still prone to COVID-19? So here uh, we are talking about will a person be immune <laughs> to getting the infection again? This is a new disease, so we don't know exactly how long the immunity lasts. Normally, when a person has an infection and they get over it, their body will have mounted a fight against the infection and will be able to hold off the infection for a period of time. So for diseases like malaria, you will know that maybe for six months, if um, outside exposure, I may be immune, but after that, I may not be immune. For influenza, it may be for a season, for this particular new disease, there isn't enough evidence to say how much you will only be able to tell if people start getting reinfected and then you try to measure the period, how long did it take for a person who had had the disease to again uh, get the infection? Again, I think uh, that was uh, uh, the a medical question, but I can give you at least to what I witnessed the case of Senegal. You cannot be released on if we are, they are not doing four times in a proper number of days the, the test and that is negative. So if you are discharged, that it means that at least at that time you, you no longer have it. You can get, I don't know, is it later on, but at least for the first insect infection that has been treated in Senegal, the protocol uh, is saying that we need Four uh, tests, I think it's six negative. days. Yeah, four tests negative uh, uh, that may you may be discharged. So for Ebenezer House staff, if in two weeks they don't have any sign and symptom, does this mean that they were not contaminated from the first identified case? Do you want to say something? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so you're asking for the staff in Ebenezer House what happens after 14 days without symptoms. Yeah, actually after 14 days without symptoms, you are released from quarantine, whether you are doing quarantine or self-monitoring, because the incubation period for the uh, virus, between like the time you get the virus or you get contaminated to the time you get disease, is actually within 14 days. And 14 days is actually on the higher side. So it was put on the higher so that you are able to have that, uh, to reduce chances of you missing, uh, missing it if it's there. So after 14 days, then you'll be okay. So let me move back. In the past, uh, with Ebola preparedness at UN level, some international staff has expressed wish to receive treatment from else countries in most cases, their own countries. If they happen to be unfortunately infective, what this still be applicable in the case of COVID-19? So the, the UN has guidelines for medical evacuation of staff, like they were for Ebola. There are also guidelines for medical evacuation of staff related to COVID-19. And there are certain conditions which have to be met, and it's also on a case-by-case -case basis. First, let me reiterate that most of the cases that are infected are going to be mild disease. For, for which even hospitalization will not be indicated. For those who may have severe disease, the worst case scenario that will have critical 
illness will be related to can they be ventilated safely. In the briefing of the uh, diplomatic corps, the Minister of Health indicated the capacities for intensive care units in the country, but we've seen in some countries that these capacities are being overwhelmed by the number of cases. So with the assessment of what is the capacity, the medical service capacity in the country, decisions will then be arrived at whether there is qualification for UN medical evacuation related to COVID-19. So there is an assessment that is done of countries to see do they have capacity to be able to treat critically ill patients. I think that the guidelines are very uh, clear, of course, they even this morning we discussed and uh, Dr. Mwinga and, and uh, we'll look at some um, aspects that are more um, to the nitty gritty of, the, of your question. But the guidance was saying we need to consider the following aspect. First of all, do we have intensive care unit number three? So that's important. Second, it's case by case that will be discussed if the UN Medical and the, and, the, and the WHO will be supporting. As you can see in the guidance, it's for WHO, UN staff, and all even the partners that are frontline front line workers. Third element that is important is you need to know the uh, transportation, the airlift, both from the country of origin and the recipient countries. Many countries do not accept now and uh, what i have read i'm not a medical doctor but i read that we do have airlift for severe case this is also another element severe case that could be airlift it is on the guidance but you need from the country of origin you need the consent you need the authorization and as you may know also many countries uh, are far from rwanda so you cannot have a flight without having stopover somewhere and that country also, many countries do not accept. So the way I see it, and I'm reading it here on the, if you are unwell, it is mentioning in our, the guidance that we received that most people, more than 80%, will have a mild illness that would be treated even over the counter medication, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and others. So let's not panic, but it, it, Dr. Mwinga will guide us and if the UN Medical Clinic will come to the nitty gritty of your question. But as of now, there are clear guidance on Medevac. And uh, of course, I want to add that for evacuation, agencies are leading on that. It's important that also to, we can, as a UN, will be supportive, but each agency also have its uh, uh, internal procedures. But the RC has a, has a right to sign based on the uh, advice given by the uh, medical authorities to say that we authorize, but it is sometimes many of agencies, and I've done it in the past, and you as well, many head of agencies, they need to get clearance also from their HQ on the other aspect of this medieval. But we'll come back uh, with head of agency to a nitty gritty of this aspect of your question. But as of now, we have also clear guidance on that. Could you please tell us if there is any other UN affected in Rwanda, how about other countries? I, I, I said to in my message to you, it's very clear, it's an internal communication. And uh, if you read at the bottom, it really is important that what is said within UN remain within UN. The way I'm seeing it, and I see it in one WhatsApp group, that even we start stigmatizing uh, stigma on one people, even providing ID, a UN staff should not have that behavior. If you have information or other aspect, please, please liaise to your head with your head of agency. They can liaise with us. We can, you know, confirm or not. But don't, don't ever spread uh, in social media in other aspect communication. But I told you that I owe you transparency. Here, as we speak, this is the only case. And I disclose it in my communication too. That's the case that we are having. Of course, I must also disclose there is one uh, uh, close contact to 
another case and so far that person is doing well and that person also we are monitoring and uh, we'll owe you the information whenever there is any other development on that case but as we speak there is only one UN staff and he's doing fine that person uh, we talked to him uh, through the the agency concern is doing fine he's treated and uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, he will go through this dif dif this difficult time for the other UN staff also as you know uh, there is a website with the UN medical and I did it with the support of the agency concern and uh, Dr. Mwinga to report the case every single UN staff infected should be reported in the 24 hours of the case happening. So we do have other cases uh, in the UN. Um, I, I know Senegal, I know Ghana, we do have it, they are reported. So it is something, we have clear guidance on how to report it, giving all the things, but, but, and I insist on that, at the same time, protecting the privacy of that UN staff. Because stigma is very dangerous in the way that we are working in the world of social media, like, you know, uh, at this, uh, that could be spread easily uh, without even knowing, you know, the nitty gritty of the facts. So we'll owe you transparency, we'll owe you communication, but we really, really call on your way of behaving regarding the use of social media, because we owe also the same privacy uh, to that person. And in fact, before issuing my communique, I, I uh, liaise with the staff, just to explain to him why I'm doing that. I liaise with the head of UN agency concern, and both accepted and put what they think would be fine as well to be added to, to disclose and to support what we are doing. So it's fine, this is what I wanted to say on that one. How long would it take to, for zoos to test it positive to be free from the disease? Question to the RC. We have started working from home, but we don't have much control of the security guard as they are coming every day and night. Any advice for the security guard companies that may be facilitated by UNDES? What I did, uh, I sent a message, uh, Lee was outside, I sent a message to, uh, the, uh, to the security company to take some measures. They are taking preventive measures like sanitizers, washing, and others. And I can give you personally what I have done with the person working in my home. What I have done with them, every single person in, that, in my home, I have given him a thermometer to, to, to check if they have issues. I have given them the possibility to just drop me a message if they are not feeling well, even if it is false, uh, uh, you know, pieces of information that they need to uh, cross-check. Then and for me, they, they will not come. If they are coughing, if they have all the, uh, you know, small, the small symptoms that we mentioned, the initial symptoms that we mentioned, this is something that we, we need to. But I think uh, Lee is here, maybe if she, you want to add some other aspect. But we'll talk to uh, the security company. We'll have meetings, and Lee is here leading us. Please, Lee, uh, if you have to add as an aspect. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, besides that, as also keep a distance from your guard, you, just like your appropriate space you're doing in your office and at home, the same thing with your guard. You don't have to be really close with them. Uh, and we contact the security company, so they're taking their action, as, the, as Cody said. So now the, the other one is for Dr. Mwinga again. What is Rwanda capacity to respond to COVID-19 infrastructure? How many quarantine locations? <laughs> Please. It's okay. Just to share that globally, there was an assessment done to characterize or categorize countries in terms of ability and readiness to respond. And 
the focus was to have priority one countries, those that were had a lot of trouble with China and were most likely to get the infection, but also had the weakest health health systems. Rwanda was in not that was not in that category because it was indicated that Rwanda's health system is one of the strong systems on the continent, and so the ability to be able to respond to a health threat was strong. For every country, however strong your ability is, there are still things which you need to put in place for preparedness and readiness, and we are seeing what is happening in different countries with even much stronger systems. So yes, the capacity to respond is there, and the measures that Rwanda took for preparing for Ebola the infrastructure that was put in for hand washing across different places is really serving us well. We've had a briefing where the Ministry of Health has indicated where the isolation units are and the number. The last, which was before we had any case, they had been four that had been identified, and then also where people are going to be treated. Initially, it was one hospital. I'm sure there has been update in the infrastructure, and maybe one of my colleagues can uh, give some more detail on that. Uh, thank you. Uh, in Rwanda, uh, uh, we are ready uh, to receive people uh, suspected uh, of having this uh, disease. Uh, currently, uh, in each district hospital, we have two uh, holding rooms, and uh, we have also uh, one uh, treatment center that uh, ha has been equipped uh, already, and we have another uh, big uh, isolation center. So, uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure in Rwanda, we are ready, and then in terms of equipment also, and, uh, and, uh, and the training of healthcare providers, uh, lab technicians have been trained. So, um, in summary, we are ready in Rwanda to to fight against this COVID-19. Thank you. I think uh, there is one aspect that uh, we all should be aware of, and I will not name the country, but uh, it's a very it's a highly developed country. Uh, Given the number of cases, their infrastructure is overstretched. So we just need to make sure that it will not go out of control. Uh, because I haven't seen in the world, and even China, you know, they needed to build in, in a week health facilities to, to cope with the number, increasing number. Uh, in some countries, even they are saying people should stay, and they are even now choosing whom to treat. Yeah, because of uh, the capacity, and they are very developed countries. So let's be realistic. So far, we are very fine. We keep on supporting the government and really making sure that we don't have over uh, spread of this uh, disease. That is important to to to, to mention. Also. So, what's Rwanda? We have already, Doctor Minga. What is your first point of call in case of need? The government has one, one, four other nine. Is the UN clinic supporting in diagnosing the virus? Right. You want to say something? Right now, the diagnosis in Rwanda is only made is only made uh, in the national reference lab. None of the other labs right now have capacity to be able to make the diagnosis. So the UN clinic is not dealing with diagnosis. All samples are taken to the appropriate lab for diagnosis. Then in terms of points of contact, yes, it's 114, but there's also the contacts of the UN the medical personnel. 0782220070 or 71. I have it in mind. So, <laughs> so I, I see also there is a comment, and it's very right. Uh, we needed to do this arrangement. Maybe we are not uh, fully compliant with this one meter distance. 
but we really want you, urge you to make sure that you are doing it. Uh, we are not uh, doing what we are preaching, but it is just for, I think, for this setting. We could not do it at the UN compound. Uh, does UN clinic help? I will even give a detail that was in one country that I will not disclose. Uh, one of the person who has been infected went straight to your UN medical. So now it's difficult to have people coming to UN medical. As Dr. Kassonde mentioned, in all this, it was like the Ebola and other things. There are numbers, there are procedures, just follow that. You can call the medical doctor that could direct you in what needs to be done, and you have 114 and the RBC and other lab, because this is very critical that you, you, you have that aspect as well. How long does it take? So we have already, does your clinic help? We have been seeing people wearing face masks. It's already answered. Uh, the process to isolate, quarantine, and lab test is the same countrywide. There's no particular for can we follow the guidelines. So it's fine. Well noted, Master. But this UN basis is really to do in relation to the UN staff home if the whole family is guaranteed. What the UN DSS is ready to do in relation to the security of UN staff home if the whole family is quarantined outside their home. That's an important one. These are very brilliant questions. Hey, hello again. In reference to your residence, you should have a plan on how you're going to secure your residence if nobody can stay there. Depending on residential security measures for international staff that are in place, that's already taken care of. For national staff members, that's something you'll have to discuss with your head of agency, and they can put in their own implementing measures if that happens to you. Uh, but otherwise, I would have a plan of who could secure your house. Remember, if the whole family is quarantined, your house could be contaminated, so you shouldn't have people inside watching your house. But that'll have to be discussed by your agency, because that's not a blanket, uh, there's not a blanket policy worldwide for that. I also will take this opportunity to at least give you a piece that I discuss also. I, I, I think, uh, and we in the past we used to do it in the measures, we used to have, at least in countries where I was stationed, uh, a bag, seven kilo bag that we, we are ready to have with us anytime. So I think that it, it would be good, uh, we touch on the wood, God forbidden, but uh, let's also, if we see things that are not good at all, be prepared to have, you know, a bag for 14 days. Because when it, they decide to come, sometimes they don't want to take much time. So overnight they could come and say, you need to go with us in the ambulance. And even the colleague who has been to the hospital, he has been maintained to the hospital without even having close because they don't want to have back and forth. So we need it to, to have. So God forbidden, we stay safe and healthy. But if you see that there are issues that you need to face for being displaced to another area for the testing or quarantine, it's better to have a, a bag ready for 14 days. Because if it is not the case, it will be difficult uh, for us to get to you and give you the required um, but. So I come back from London last Wednesday. Although I haven't experienced any symptom, do I need to stay? Yes. Yes. As, as much as possible, because there is community transmission going on in England, it would be best for you to self-monitor, stay in a place of your own, and basically put yourself in self-quarantine for 14 days. And as people are working from home, that I think it should not be, uh, let us know what's the procedure of UN. So we already have answered that. Any guidance to containing stigma, particularly for UN? Yeah. For the guidance to contain, uh, Stigmats, it is first what I mentioned earlier. 
staff should not keep on inquiring who is the person uh, you know tested positive which agency and even going to ask is it this person uh, or that or that person because all the information that you need to have will be given to you if you are a contact they will call on you uh, they will give you the measures that should be taken if it is a given in a given building the agencies in that building as we did in Ebenezer we take the required measures to uh, you know uh, decontaminate that building if uh, you are close contact the aspect of being out for 14 days and all this aspect will be also given to you if it is also the self monitoring you will keep on monitoring yourself and reporting back both to the UN medical or, or the RBC if it is the arrangement that is done. So the second, it is in your hands. Don't also start putting in social media or discussing or <coughs> disclosing something that we have done and said inside UN. Let me tell you the truth. There is the first day it happened, a close friend and high level person, an ambassador called me and say, I heard that this is, what is uh, this? I said to him, no, what all you, uh, all you need to, to say, to know, have been disclosed. And I don't know why people are going beyond what is in the government communicate. If you are, your personal is in contact with that person, they will be in the, uh, in the contact list and they will be contacted and given the required measures to be done. We don't need to disclose. Uh, and go beyond what is uh, necessary as information to behave properly and to be prevented. Third element is the social media. I think let's stop, you know, uh, this, this, this gentleman that we put the ID all over the Rwanda, I mean, that's beyond what is acceptable. It's not something that we, we should accept. So that's something that we, we are trying to do. And uh, this is between owing you the required information and protecting the privacy of the UN staff and the UN family involved in any cases. That's what we are doing. And I think it is important that we respect that process. But Dr. Mwinga may have things to add. Okay. What a situation with a UN staff that was affected and elaborate further on existing risk mitigation. So I think it's done. Could you confirm if you understand your point work it was done? Is it advisable to travel on reassignment to Rwanda out of Rwanda? I mean, it depends on, on the country of origin and the country to which you are going. As I mentioned to you earlier, we have discussed with uh, Lee and uh, some countries it is no longer under, you know, uh, in the system uh, approval of their clearance. It will be outside the system. Uh, so we we'll check the countries to make sure that we have the required information that is provided to the staff. Second thing, uh, I have this, this, the, I have that question even from the two members of the RC office. They are saying that what happens if I sign my contract now? And Rwanda is not accepting me because they have restriction on the travel. My answer was very clear. You sign the contract. From now on, you are part of the RC office. We'll find a way for you to work remotely where you are there because you cannot travel. And wherever it is possible, then you can join us. That's my answer to that question. But I don't know if Dr. Mwinga want to add. Is there any vaccine? No, there is no approved vaccine for COVID-19. There, uh, there is research going on trying to develop treatments, trying to develop vaccines, but these are months away. Yeah. Is there any other UN staff in Ebenezer House with COVID-19? To the best of my knowledge, no. That's where we stand actually. In fact, if you look at the list of the government, you can, you can see uh, the, the aspect. But anyway, that's what I wanted to say. Psychological, uh, psychological and social support. Yes, we discussed it this morning, and uh, I'm really very uh, proud to report that uh, both Stephen Vasha and Dr. Mwinga and uh, Lee has taken 
a step and latest tomorrow uh, we'll have a retainee contract for psychological support. We have the name, we have the CVs, and uh, there will be a contract with UNDP that will be provide the support on the retainee. Retainee meaning that as needed basis if we need their support. Is the cost of testing kit covered by health insurance, including those used by U1? I can answer. No. Currently, people are not being charged for the testing that is happening in Rwanda. It is free. Are there self-testing kit available in the country? If yes, is it advisable to test yourself to go to the health? There are no self-testing kits. On the market, there are people who are producing rapid kits, that's kits which still need to be used in the laboratory but will get you the results faster than the current one which is being used. Those are not yet approved for use in, in many instances. So right now the recommended testing is the one which we have been told it will take about six hours to get the test because it has different laboratory procedures to get from collection of the sample, the sample being processed and when it is tested. Can someone get coronavirus more than once? You have answered it. And the second one is this, what is the indicated health facility at which staff can have uh, medical attention? It follows government procedure. It follows government. Yeah, like it was said earlier, if anyone has any symptoms, they're supposed to call 114 or the UN Medical uh, Clinic. And currently, for example, if someone meets the case definition and they are tested and they have a COVID, for now, there is no specific different facility for the UN but there is a treatment center at Kanyinya that uh, where positive patients are being treated. Yes, um, we have, as uh, Elizabeth has said, uh, we have one treatment center at Kanyinya Health Center. Uh, it is uh, at uh, 20 kilometers from Kigali. And uh, for lab examination uh, exam, uh, there is a laboratory here in Kigali where we, uh, we perform, they perform the, the test and um, to confirm, to confirm that, that, that you are really positive, uh, there are two, two laboratories in Africa, in Senegal and in South Africa, that is, this is for your information. But here in Rwanda also, we test and after we send uh, in one of those uh, referral laboratories to confirm if you are really positive. Sorry, colleagues, we are moving back and forth. So for validation of so for validation of tests, if you remember a few weeks ago, there were only two labs in the African region that could uh, test. But now most of the countries in the African region can test. The issue of sending samples to reference labs was basically to do validation of the first few positive cases to see that the standards of the lab are fine and the, thereafter samples do not keep going to the reference lab, they continue being validated in the lab. Here in Rwanda, there are different tests being used with validation also being done in uh, Rwanda. So uh, there is one question that uh, the other one are just comments saying that they praise this one and need to act as human. But there is one question, in case of visa expiry within March or so, do you have any plan to engage with the government of Rwanda for any flexible measures uh, from them? Some countries are offering, I don't understand, is it the visa expiry in Rwanda? And if it is the case, I don't see any issue. Is there, in case of visa expiry within March or so, do you have any plan to engage with the government for any flexible 
measures from them. Because if it is visa experience, uh, even if the government is working, this is what they suggested, but if, uh, offices are open for uh, you know, duties. But if it is a specific one, let's talk. You can give us the detail and uh, we'll check what we can do on that matter. Put it off, sorry. Some colleague want to join this meeting waiting for host approval. What is host approval? Yeah. Yeah, ask, uh, I will ask Rene if there are. Please send to Rene. Uh, Rene, so that if there are things that they need to, to approve, no problem. All the UN staff are, are, uh, are uh, you know, in, invited to do that. And please not also, we are recording this and we'll put it in all the website of the UN uh, so that they can be, have access to. Uh, of course, only UN staff will have access to that. Uh, agencies will exercise their role on that. Um, could you have such a briefing? Yes, we plan to have such a briefing on a regular basis. Weekly might, not, might be challenging, but if you think that uh, it will, uh, if there are any major development, we'll do it. But we plan to have it regular, uh, you know, regular briefing on that. The contact number of the counselors, once we have the, the, uh, the retainee, on retainee con uh, contract, will inform you uh, on, on that. But uh, they are speeding up the process. And I know that this morning, both Dr. Mwinga, Stephen, and Vasha had the meeting with, and with the support also with the UN Medical Committee. Thank you very much. We are also with you. We thank you for attending. Thank you for uh, your nice comment to the RC. It's a teamwork and all the UN head of agency and UNDSS and so. So this is what we have. Uh, so I just uh, want to thank you all. We were really, it was highly attended. I want uh, to thank also Stephen Vasha uh, for uh, allowing their team, Rene and Fidel, to set it this very important engagement. This is recorded, so you'll get everything. And uh, I want to thank also Elizabeth and uh, Alfred, uh, Lee, and most importantly, our uh, really hardworking uh, COVID-19 coordinator, uh, Dr. Mwinga. Uh, if you really want to have a conclusion of that, don't panic, prudence, vigilance, prevention, privacy, and hope. And we are together to build the strongest way of making sure that we overcome this coronavirus. Of course, in strong partnership with the government of Rwanda, the government is doing an extraordinary good work in overcoming this uh, coronavirus. So remain vigilant, stay tuned. Uh, we'll keep on providing through communicate all the measures that are important for you to know. But in the meantime, let me end by the prevention and general precaution, avoid close contact with people who are ill with fever, cough, or respiratory symptoms, practice social distancing, keep one meter from others, and develop an alternate greeting. Do not shake hand, hug, or kiss. Wash your hand with soap and water for 20 seconds, or sanitize your hand frequently using an alcohol-based hand wrap. There are two of the most effective measures available. Do not touch your face with unwashed hand. Clean or disinfect your work area before use, particularly if you share equipment with others using a regular household cleaning space or disinfecting wipes. Avoid high density gathering. That's why we are doing it like this, where you are in close contact with others for extended periods, such as rush hour committing or other crowded gathering. Get a flu vaccination if in some countries. Uh, there is no need for well people to wear a mask. Okay. And uh, keep well. We are here together to make sure that we are all safe, secure, stay, and deliver for this country, for the people in Rwanda, 
leaving no one behind. First and foremost, be assured that our collective leadership is here to make sure that you are safe and secure, you, your family, and your friends. Thank you for attending and thank you for your excellent comments. And thank you also for your very good uh, and uh, very high level questions that help us also finalize our business continuity plan and continue and contingency plan and continue taking the required measures to keep us all safe and secure. Don't panic. Let's have hope overcome this coronavirus. Thank you so much, colleague. Bye. Merci beaucoup. Murako Zechane. Murako Zechane. Naki Bananira. Thank you. Oh, you did not put at me the whole. It was 22 who were waiting. They because must have done it when we had started. Mm, yeah. Okay. Good job. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. Ah.